Somerset Mom once wrote that in each shave lies a philosophy. I couldn't agree more. No matter how mundane some action might appear, keep at it long enough and it becomes a contemplative, even meditative act. I didn't start running because somebody asked me to. Just like I didn't become a novelist because somebody asked me to. One day out of the blue, I wanted to write a novel. And one day out of the blue, I started to run simply because I wanted to. I've always done whatever I felt like doing in life. I just run. I run in a void. Or maybe I should put it this way. I run in order to acquire a void. People's minds can't be a complete blank. Human beings' emotions are not strong or consistent enough to sustain a vacuum. Running has a lot of advantages. First of all, you don't need anybody else to do it. And no need for any special equipment. You don't have to go to any special place to do it. All I do is keep on running in my own cozy, homemade void, my own nostalgic silence. What's needed for a writer of fiction, at least one who hopes to write a novel, is the energy to focus every day for half a year, or a year, or two years. Fortunately, these two disciplines, focus and endurance, are different from talent, since they can be acquired and sharpened through training. Writing novels to me is basically a kind of manual labor. Writing itself is mental labor, but finishing an entire book is closer to manual labor. The whole process, sitting at your desk, focusing your mind like a laser beam, imagining something out of a blank horizon, creating a story, selecting the right words one by one, keeping the whole flow of the story on track, requires far more energy over a long period than most people ever imagine. Most of what I know about writing I've learned through running every day. These are practical physical lessons. How much can I push myself? How much rest is appropriate? And how much is too much? How far can I take something and still keep it decent and consistent? When does it become narrow-minded and inflexible? How much should I be aware of the world outside and how much should I focus on my inner world? To what extent should I be confident in my abilities and when should I start doubting myself? Emotional hurt is the price a person has to pay in order to be independent. That's what I basically believe, and I've lived my life accordingly. In certain areas of my life, I actively seek out solitude. Sometimes, however, the sense of isolation, like acid spilling out of a bottle, can unconsciously eat away at a person's heart and dissolve it. You could see it too as a kind of double-edged sword. It protects me, but at the same time steadily cuts away at me from the inside. I think in my own way I'm aware of this danger, and that's why I've had to constantly keep my body in motion, in some cases pushing myself to the limit, in order to heal the loneliness I feel inside, and to put it in perspective, not so much as an intentional act, but as an instinctive reaction. From the start, artistic activity contains elements that are unhealthy and antisocial, I'll admit this. To deal with something unhealthy, a person needs to be as healthy as possible. In other words, an unhealthy soul requires a healthy body. The healthy and the unhealthy are not necessarily at opposite ends of the spectrum. They don't stand in opposition to each other, but rather complement each other, and in some cases even band together. Basically, a writer has a quiet inner motivation and doesn't seek validation in the outwardly visible. Running without a break for more than two decades has also made me stronger both physically and emotionally. I'm the kind of person who has to experience something physically, actually touch something before I have a clear sense of it. No matter what it is, unless I see it with my own eyes, I'm not convinced. I'm a physical, not intellectual type of person. Only when I'm given an actual physical burden and my muscles start to groan and sometimes scream does my comprehension meter shoot upward and I'm finally able to grasp something.